Hello, good day everyone. I hope everything is going well with you. And I welcome you back to our subject, Purposive Communication Using English in Multilingual Context. And I hope that you are in comfortable seat wherever you are watching this pre-recorded video. And we are done with our lesson one, two, and three. And our topic for today is all about lesson four, exploring text, reflecting different cultures. And to start with our lesson four, let's have first our learning outcomes. First is to demonstrate an understanding of the, of the importance of cultural context and communication process. Second is to analyze texts that reflect varied cultures and practices. And last is to appreciate the various cultural identities and differences. Okay, let's start. So what is cultural text? We all know that com intercultural communication has an important role to play in effective communication. And pronunciation is one of the causes of miscommunication. This is so because of differences of phonology and the way on how to, uh, the sound system of uh, the pronunciation or the way on how to pronounce those words. And according to Kakro and Nelson, year 2006, page 37, they claim that in terms of pronunciation, most outer and expanding circle varieties display differences from the inner circle varieties, similar to those <coughs> sorry, found between regional dialects within the inner circle varieties. And we already discussed the inner, outer, and expanding circle, so you have an idea about that thing. And aside from pronunciation, um, nonverbal communication also plays an important role in effective communication. And also, interpretation vary because of um, differences in pronunciation. Like for example, if only says hit it instead of hit it, uh, or she asks, instead of she asked, uh, diba? miscommunication is likely to happen. So we have different ways did, on how to pronounce those words, especially kung maad ta sa lahi ng mga country. Okay? And in Philippine languages, every vowel is pronounced with a full distinct sound. A, E, E, O, U. And that is mona sila ang mga vowels. And Filipinos pronounce words as they are written or spelled out, making it syllable time and not stress time. So, ang syllable, kung ato na siyang itagalog, mona siya ang mga pantig. And lastly, Americans, on the other hand, gi blend nila ang syllables or sometimes even drop some sound, making the syllables short oh, like for example um gotcha kung sa filipina siya kung sa mana siya got you uh what she say in filipino sa mana siya what did he say jahit it kung sa mana siya sa philippine did you hit it mm. how about this can I get you a drink? Or can I get you a drink? Uh, diba? We can see the differences nga as American, gina blend nila ang syllables to make it short. Pero sa to, ah, gina subaybay jud na to ang full distinct of the syllables or sa mga vowels. Diba? Next. A cultural barrier does not only pertain to the differing languages. It may also be in the form of uh, cultural practice or even a bod a bodily gestures. For instance, in English speaking countries and even in the Philippines, the thumb up gesture signals approval. However, it is considered offensive in other countries such as Greece, Italy, in some parts of Middle East Asia. Okay? Para sa toa, it's approval, pero sa ilaha, it's offensive. I hope that's clear. 
And mo nagiingon na to nga we should be aware jud sa ato ang mga bodily gestures, sa ato mga emotions uh, kung asa ta nga context or asa ta nga environment ni ato. So mo na akong ingon, it may be good para sa imuha pero bad para sa ilaha. Next, likewise, making a circle with one thumbs and four finger generally means okay. Ana siya. Okay in many western culture but it's not so in in countries like Japan where it is interpreted as a sign for money or in some arab is a threat oh diba it's a threat down ni in some other countries so thus should always uh, thus we should always be remember that we should be careful in using bodily language and bodily language should be properly interpreted as their meanings vary from culture to culture Next, formal and informal language. And your purpose for communication in the relationship you have with the listeners or readers will determine if you are to use formal or informal language. And when you are in the gymnasium and a teenager offers you a seat, you acknowledge the kind gesture by saying, thanks for the seat. However, if you are in an academic forum and an organizer offers you a seat, you say, thank you very much, ma'am. If kung kabalo juga siyang pangalan, mas better is stay to make it formal. And that is the differences between formal and informal language. Lastly, when speaking impromptu on a certain topic, you should use ordinary conversational language o oh, di ba nakadugbog noise and that is an example of noise na discuss na to sa tuan communication models however you are to give a lecture in a conference your language should be formal in the same manner that when you write your speech in your purpose is to inform your audience on climate change if your speech is meant to entertain your listener on a, a light topic and your language should be informal okay what well, is the differences between formal and informal language from the word itself formal so formal language lang dito tong gamit inana na siya ka simple dinan na to siya i complicate pa okay and that's the end of our discussion in unit 3 lesson 4 i hope that you learned something new sa to ang discussion today. Thank you so much for watching this pre-recorded video. And if wala na sabtan, palihu ko pakibalik aning a pre-recorded video. Again, thank you so much. See you next time. And keep safe and God bless us all. Bye-bye.